Hi guys. Welcome to the Synths of Sci-Fi, the show where we look at the most recognizable sounds in sci-fi throughout the years and dig into the artists, synths, and techniques that were used to create them. In this episode, we're going to continue our look into Wendy Carlos' work on Tron, and in particular, her use of one of the original digital additive synthesizers. Let's start by talking about synthesis itself. All the synths that we've featured up to this point use what is called subtractive synthesis. In subtractive synthesis, the machine takes the pure tone from the sound source, most likely the oscillator, and peels away certain frequencies to shape the tone. Have a look at what happens here when I apply the Moog ladder filter to this square wave. You can see that as I engage the filter, in this case a low pass filter, the higher frequencies of the tone are removed. This way, for example, you can use just the lower frequencies for the bass part, or you can bring back in the high tones for a cutting lead part. So, on the other end of the synth spectrum, we have additive synthesis. With additive synthesis, instead of removing frequencies from a pure tone, we add tones at different frequencies to create a much more complicated sound. Have a look at this vintage documentary where Wendy Carlos is using additive synthesis to replicate the overtone series of a xylophone. Now she specifies three more pure tones in the proportion she already knows a real xylophone produces. Now I'll put in all four of them. Now this is something that's very close to being a replica of a xylophone, but there's an element that's missing, and that is the hammer noise that you get with a real instrument when the mallet impacts against the wood. For this final touch, she adds an electronic shake to each sound component. One of my favorite synth modules, the Teleharmonic by Make Noise, uses this technique to create the sounds. Check out how additive synthesis is used to create these complex tones and textures. While most analog synths from the late 1970s used subtractive synthesis, the advancement of computers allowed for new digital signal processing, thus the development of these compact additive synthesizers. The synth that Winnie Carlos used on the film Tron to create the complex synth orchestra sounds was one of the first synths to utilize digital signal processing, the Krumer General Development System. Yes. The GDS hosted 32 digital oscillators that could be individually tuned from 0 to 13,000 Hz. The tones could then be triggered together to create incredibly complex sound. The development of the GDS actually started as a communications project at Bell Labs in the early 1970s. The research was then licensed to Krumer, who applied the concepts to their new synthesizer design. Although this marked a huge breakthrough in synthesis, the GDS was never mass-produced. 
it's believed that only five to six units were ever made, one of which found its home in Wendy Carlos' studio. Although the GDS was never mass produced, it did pave the way for the development of its younger brother, the Synergy Synth, which is known as one of the first commercially available digital synthesizers. The Synergy had a moderate commercial run, but was soon knocked out by a certain Yamaha synth. But that's a story for another video. Thanks so much for watching this episode of The Synths of Sci-Fi. I'd like to do more of these, so please leave me a comment if there are any iconic sounds that you would like me to feature. And if you like this video, please consider supporting the channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see y'all in the next video. All the best.